Yo guys, welcome back to part 2 of my guide to Vox Populi. Now we covered quite a few topics in the last part, including founding your first city, choosing your first buildings and techs, and choosing your policy. And we did leave the last part on a little bit of a cliffhanger where we were talking about using your units to be a nuisance to your neighbours. And it just so happens that our neighbour Egypt is building the pyramids that we're also trying to build. So I'm sure you'd be happy to know that we did manage to beat them to it on turn 44. And we had just pillaged and stood on their silver mine. And I checked in game and they were one turn away from building it. So that literally may have made the difference. So every little does help, guys. And I'm sure you'll remember the other use for units, which is defending your city from barbarians and not letting them get next to it. So let us see how that goes. And hopefully we can talk about some more stuff like settling more cities and choosing more techs and choosing your pantheon. Yeah, I mean, we just lost 48 food because the Barbarian decided to run next to our capital. That's the kind of loot you can expect, man. Luckily, we didn't actually have that much food that was stored anyway. But how crazy is that? Okay, so we got this um, free settler from Pyramids, so it's time to choose where to settle him. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because you really have to try not to be greedy here. Um, and prioritise defence over anything else with your settles. So I pretty much always settle my um, other cities on hills unless I'm sure that they're like not going to be on the border or something. If they're going to be anywhere near another city, you need them on a hill. And just like generally defensible locations. So like, you know, getting one extra tile within the borders compared to actually having a location where you can just like set up archers and pick off any enemies coming you save so much more by having a better defensive location than you do by having one extra square so if you are playing aggressive you can like go and settle right close to another sieve again though on a hill so i don't know we're way too far here but if we were like a military sieve that was closer we could Put one somewhere like here or here. Or maybe here even. Like anywhere around these hills honestly. Because that would be a big problem for them to get rid of. And we could reinforce it with archers quite easily. What you definitely don't want to do is put a city like say here. Where it could be attacked from multiple hills that it wouldn't even be able to shoot back to like a cannon here or here you wouldn't even be able to attack it with a city and it would just be able to shoot at you 
generally though you will just want to be kind of defensive with your city so don't go too far away you know don't worry about having some overlapping tiles just keep your cities within range so that they can reinforce each other and stuff um third ring is not something you'll use that often with the other cities you sell so I would try and get all the stuff that you want within one or two tiles. And the stuff that you will want to be getting within tiles is, I mean, natural wonders, if you find any of them, are normally pretty good. And um, tiles for Monopoly, for example. Or other useful resources like strategics and um, any other luxuries you might need for happiness. Iron is probably the most useful strategic, I would say, throughout the whole game, but obviously some sieves you really need horses with as well. Being on a river is not particularly useful, honestly. Like I said, if you're going to be settling on, on a hill anyway, it doesn't make a big difference whether it's on a river or not. And yeah, just bear in mind where the other sieves near you are. We know about Egypt to the left, and any other sieves are going to be coming from the seas. So, any city I settle here shouldn't be vulnerable from the left, if possible. And any cities on the coast, I would definitely try and keep my coastal tiles to a minimum. So, somewhere like here, where it's literally just one coastal tile. Rather than say, for example, here where it wants me to settle, that's three, or, you know, here or on this island here. That would be a suicide, pretty much. Because uh, people will come with boats at some point, and boats are really good at taking cities, actually. You can get some pretty good choke points with uh, mountains and lakes and stuff, and also... Uh, use rivers as well because attacking across rivers gives a negative modifier and yeah on top of this think about who you're actually near so say if you're near the Incans they can go on mountains so settling a city in the middle of mountains not the best idea and if you're near Carthage you definitely don't want to be setting any settling any island um, cities Unless you want to lose them for some reason. And the other thing to bear in mind is that you can uh, build walls if you need them. And you should, honestly. If a city is vulnerable. They uh, can definitely be the difference between saving a city or not. And once you lose one city, you can pretty much have lost the game at that point. So if it means that your capital is exposed. So definitely keep your um, settled city safe and try and use them to create a good buffer around your capital. In terms of this situation, um, we actually have quite a lot of space, honestly. So for the time being, I reckon people will come and start settling cities at some point across the seas. And of course, Egypt will try and spread this way, but I guess we can try and hold that out with the scout. So I think my main priority is trying to get this monopoly to help us get a religion. And even though we have a lot of space, I'm still just going to try and expand slowly and keep the, um, you know, keep safe. I mean, there's some pretty amazing locations like unbelievable stone here and deers here, but we can't just go and randomly settle the city over there and lose it. It's just pointless, isn't it? So I definitely could consider a city here later on, once we get rid of that barb camp. Yeah, that's kind of the other problem. Like, a lot of the locations are actually taken up by barb camps right now. So I'm going to go and settle right here, I believe. I could honestly settle here because this city is probably safe, but... Like I said, I'm just going to be safe rather than sorry. And um, production is probably better in your other cities than food anyway. And we'll be closer to the stone. But yeah, I'm trying to get tobacco for the Monopoly. 
and next city might well just go there, honestly. I don't know why I want to settle here before I want to settle there. Yeah, I do though. I do want to settle here. Just get a bit of control over this space with the barbs and stuff. And all of the, this city would only have food as well, so it wouldn't actually be that good. So now on to tier 2 techs. So here you get six choices actually. Fishing, trade, calendar, construction, military theory, and bronze working. So as I mentioned before, going construction straight away to get walls can actually be a pretty good way to go. But other than that, you'll probably want to be focusing on your resource. Like I said, I guess it depends whether it's actually good or not. Something like amber, for example, is honestly useless. So I wouldn't bother rushing for it at all. But some of the other ones can be worth completely rushing. Sometimes they're just alright, but I would say it's never a bad way to go to uh, go towards your resource. Other than that, there's fishing which allows you to embark and go across water tiles. I find myself going for that quite a lot actually because, um, you know, you'll often have to go across to kill like a barb camp or something or maybe settle a city where you want to settle it to get a resource or something like that. And also, this allows you to go out and meet everyone as quickly as possible as well. Particularly all the city-states, which is nice. Then there's also trade, which allows um, caravans. Caravans are pretty amazing on high difficulties. Like, the higher the difficulty, the better they are, really, because you can send them to the other civs that will be ahead of you in tech, and that means that the trade route will give you a lot of tech and uh yeah these are useful like throughout the game especially if you're behind if you're not though you can still do ones to city states that you're allied with or internal trade routes that are pretty good as well just make sure that you keep them safe do not put them anywhere near barbarians or you know those crazy civs that you know you're gonna end up at war with Okay, there's four wonders here as well. We've got Petra, Temple of Artemis, Mausoleum, and Statue of Zeus. These are all decent. Probably Zeus is the best. I mean, situationally, of course, like if you're going for military stuff, it is the best. Artemis and Mausoleum are okay. I wouldn't go for them and like just for the sake of it. Like I would go for them only if I wanted that tech anyway. So if I already wanted the herbalist or if I already wanted the stoneworks anyway. Because uh, you can often get beaten on these. Petra I really like actually. And also you can get it a bit more consistently. Like I mean if you actually can get it because you need to be next to a desert, but there'll be fewer sieves that you're competing with, because not that many people will have desert next to them. So you can often get it a bit later. And like I said, I really do think trade routes are very good, so the free, the extra trade route and the free caravan, super nice in my opinion. Bear in mind, you do need two policies for all of these wonders. So... That can often be a bit embarrassing if you rush for one and don't have that. Ah oh, yeah, also there's a lot of um, unique units on the second text. I think there's quite a few unique spearmen, honestly, and uh, some unique horsemen and stuff as well. All of which are very useful, as I mentioned before. So going straight for them, not a bad idea at all. In terms of us, as I said before, I really um, want calendar for the plantations on the tobacco. Even though tobacco is not great, um, I still want to do that, I think. 
It's kind of a toss up between going her calendar now and getting pottery, which I still don't have because I already had the free settler. But um, I'm probably going to need like five tobacco, so I'm still going to need another city or two and workers to actually improve them in order to get the monopoly. So I guess I just need to think about what the best way to get the monopoly online quickest is and go for whatever tech helps me do that. And I believe it is calendar because I can build another worker now and then get some settlers in the future while the workers are building the first plantations, build settlers to go and get the second locations. One other little thing to bear in mind when you're settling your city is that it's going to increase your tech and culture policy costs. So we're just about to get this policy. If I were to settle this city, it would increase the cost by another seven, which would mean two turns more. So I'm actually just going to wait to get this policy before I settle my city. Not a huge deal, but on smaller maps it actually can be. Smaller maps it can be like 10 or 15% I think, the policy cost increase. Okay, time for another pretty big decision here, which is the Pantheon. So there's a lot of options here. Well, slightly less than normal, actually, because some of them have been taken. Um, none of these are particularly important, though, I'd say. So, yeah, I'm not going to go through them all. They do get changed somewhat uh, regularly anyway. So you will just have to look through them all yourself and choose the best one. But I feel like there are pretty much three situations that you'll find yourself in when you come to getting a Pantheon. So the first situation is that there is one of the beliefs that could get you a religion. So, you know, something that synergizes well with your sieve or the land that you're on enough that you can actually get a religion from it. This does have to be incredibly quick on deity, so there's only a certain number of religions of beliefs that are actually capable of doing this. I would say low turn 80s on standard, or probably even turn 80, so 120 on epic is when you want to have your religion by. Yeah, it's going to have to be one of the beliefs that kind of work straight away, so some of them give bonuses to the terrain that you're on say stars and sky on tundra you know open sky perhaps or uh, desert or the one that I really think is good is nature if you have a lot of mountains around because it just instantly applies and especially if you can find a natural wonder as well um, you can also do beauty with world wonders especially say like Stonehenge and it gives plus two for the palace as well so it is a nice little bonus early and one other which I've been able to do it with is um, C which is here if you have some of the atolls around and can get fishing boats up early and you get the faith directly from coastal cities as well and I suppose also springtime, if you have one of the um, 
Monopoly with faith things as well, for example, tobacco. But you do have to be incredibly quick with it if you want that to work. So most of the ones that work on like improved resources are not going to be able to actually get you a religion, even if they do work with what you have. Okay, number two is that you are playing a religious sieve, or yeah, maybe you have one of the monopolies that you can get. So you can just choose the belief that you think is going to help you most throughout the game, so it doesn't necessarily have to be one of the instant ones. And yeah, what I mean by religious sieve is like Byzantium or Spain or something that gives you extra faith so that you'll be able to get a religion without focusing it. So there's quite a few that do give um, useful things. I suppose a lot of them have been taken, actually. But um, yeah, I mean, just go with whatever you have the most of, I suppose. And I'm sure you can tell what you think will be useful. I'll just give an honourable mention to protection though, because it may not be obvious just how good this one is if you're doing war stuff. Like I said earlier, the way that war generally works in this, you will be doing a lot of um, using your units and then healing them, trying to keep them in your territory. So, yeah, and it, it gives you a reasonable amount of faith. Like, having more faith than you need to get a religion is still going to be useful. Like, you can buy great people. There's a lot of other things you can do with um, excess faith as well. So, yeah, you don't have to just take a belief that only gives science or culture because you already have enough faith. Like, the more faith you have, the better. And situation number three is probably the most common one. You should kind of expect this situation, which is that you won't be able to get a religion. Like I said, it does have to be very early. So sometimes you literally just won't be able to, or it would just be too big of a sacrifice of other things to do it. So here's a little bit similar to the last one, except you want stuff that benefits you early because it's only a matter of time before somebody else starts converting you to their religion and you lose your pantheon anyway. You know, f having faith still is useful because it gives you a bit of control over what religion you actually have in your cities and buildings and stuff. But probably better to try and get something else like science or culture or production, for example, if you can. And I would normally recommend God of All Creation in this situation because you you get this food production gold and science bonus in the capital for every two pantheons founded so already i think everyone else has so that would be eight pantheons so we get four of each and you get to keep it as long as you have the pantheon in your capital which is normally the last place converted so you get it for a while and yeah it's just really great science early on amongst other things so yeah, as you may have guessed, we are going to go for beauty here since we already built the wonder and we also synergize with great people as well. With our um, bonus to great people production. So this is actually incredibly good with Austria, I believe. Sometimes this isn't quite enough to get a religion on its own, but that's why we have, we're trying to get the monopoly as well. So we're not kind of relying on each one. It's a bit of both that's going to be enough to get us it. And also going to build shrines in our other cities as well. Just to help us get it that little bit earlier. You know, if we the earlier we get the religion, the more likely we are to get the beliefs we actually want. So no harm in having a bit too much faith than we need.
All right, now it is time to build a settler of our own. So you need at least four pop to build a settler and you will lose one pop once the settler is created. So the way settler production works is you get the base production that you have and then you get excess production from bonus food that you have. So bonus food means um, you get two food eaten by each of your citizens, three by specialists at the start of the game. So that's why we have minus 12. We've got three normal citizens and then two specialists. And we're creating 20 food. So for the first uh, two food excess, you get one production each. Okay, and then... Um, for your next two excess, so if you have two excess, you'll get two bonus production. If you have four excess, you'll get three bonus production. And if you have uh, eight excess, then you'll get four. And then I think it goes 12, 16. You're unlikely to have that much, but um, for each extra production. So generally, it's better to just um, focus production we have a lot of excess food coming in from a city-state ally that we have. That's why we have um, so much excess here. But So we can definitely improve this 23 overall here. By adding extra production there, probably... Nah, so we'll just leave it like that. The other thing to consider is if you want to wait to get an extra population. So that will give you an extra square to work. I guess you've got to think, will that actually increase your production? Because you'll be losing two more food, so it might actually not increase your production at all. And then the other thing to think about is that when you lose the population at the end, it's actually worth more. Um, it's like a bigger loss if you have a higher population because it took more food to get up to that population. So basically often it's better to just build it ra build it instantly rather than waiting to increase. I mean, and you'll get the settler earlier. And uh, say even I'm fairly close to pop six here, but I don't really want to go to pop six. I think I would increase my production by one because I would lose uh, one excess food, but I would gain two excess production. But then I'm going to go down to four and then probably straight back up to five. Whereas if I go up to six, then um, I would come back down to five anyway. So I would not really get any extra food but I would delay my settler and I, I would actually lose more food because I would like now I'm going to lose whatever it took to get up to five. Whereas if I go up to six, I'm going to lose the 126 food that it took to get up to pop six. So there we go. And that will do for this part, I think. We covered choosing your pantheon and expanding your empire here. So feel free to leave any questions or comments or whatever below. Tomorrow's video should be the final part of this guide. It's going to be talking about going into the classical era texts and wonders and kind of general empire management and where to go with your civilization. So hopefully see you guys there for that. And I've also got a new series coming soon, playing as England. So make sure you guys subscribe if you want to see that. And hopefully I'll talk to you guys soon.